Welcome back to the fourth part of One Man's Faith. Glad you stayed with me. Again, my name is Neil Owen. We're looking at the book of Revelation, and we're looking at a marriage. The whole book of Revelation really deals with a marriage. Now, if you remember, and we're, and, and we're talking marriage right now as, as in the marriage covenant, the marriage contract that is made, part of the whole marriage deal it starts when the groom goes to the bride's house with his father and he knocks. Remember Jesus says, he says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if you will open, I will come in and I will sup with you. That's the start of the marriage covenant. The groom and his father go to the bride's house and he knocks. If the bride doesn't want to be married to this guy, then the father doesn't open the door and that ends it. But if the bride says, yes, father, I want to marry him, then the bride's father opens the door and the groom and his father come in and they start to talk terms. And once they've worked out all the terms, they call in a scribe to write down certain things. And what this thing is called, they, they, they make a scroll, it's called a ketubah. It's the marriage contract. And it has... Um, It has five parts. Now, there are seven people involved, but there's five parts to the marriage contract or the marriage covenant. The first is they write out the combined family histories of the bride and the groom, the families. Secondly, they write out the family history of the bride. Then they'll write out the family history of the groom. And then it'll tell the story of how they met the bride and the groom. And lastly, it'll give the bride and groom's responsibilities. Interestingly enough, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy fit that pattern. The combined history is the history of mankind. That's Genesis. Tells us how it started, how the family of humans started. And then Exodus tells the history of the bride, how the bride escaped and came into this marriage covenant. And the, and the next is Leviticus. It talks about the groom's family. Leviticus is the priestly role. And Jesus is considered our high priest. And then it tells the history of how they met. And that's the book of Numbers. How they came out of Egypt. How they met God. How God gave them a covenant. And how they went on together throughout the 40 years of culling away the ones that wouldn't listen to, to God and going, you know, getting ready to go into um, uh, the promised land. And then finally the, brood, the bride and groom's responsibilities is Deuteronomy, the reading of the second law. Because Deuteronomy is, it's a new group of people. All the old ones have passed away. So they have to know what their responsibility is and what God's responsibility is to them. So the Torah is a marriage covenant. And now we're getting ready to open that and we're going to and and we start to see 
the um, uh, re, we start to see what happens as as the as the seven signatures are revealed. Now, I want you to understand that we are the bride. Okay? Isaiah, Israel was the bride to God. We are the bride to Jesus. Isaiah 49 says, Lift up your eyes and look around. All of them together, they come to you. As I live, declares the Lord, you will surely put on all of them as jewels and bind them on as a bride. So the concept of a bride is throughout is throughout the Bible, even throughout the prophets. Isaiah 61 goes on and says in verse 10, I will rejoice greatly in the Lord. My soul will exult in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation. He has wrapped me with a robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with garland and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. See, the concept of being a bride uh, Jeremiah 2 talks about, um, says in verse 31, O generation, heed the words of the Lord. Have I been a wilderness to Israel or a land of thick darkness? Why do my people say, we are free to roam? We will no longer come to you. Can a virgin forget her ornaments or her bride, her attire? Yet my people have forgotten me. Part of the problem is we don't see ourselves as this. And we think, well, okay, I'm committed to him, but I want to run over and do this with, him, with this other guy. No. See, once you're committed, once the, once the marriage covenant is written, that's it. It is signed and sealed by the bride and the groom, the bride's father, the groom's father, two witnesses, and, and, um, and the scribe. See, once you get to that point, divorce is the only way out. In Jeremiah 3, it says, and I saw for all the and I saw that for all the adulteries of faithless Israel. I had sent her away and given her a writ of divorce. You don't get one of those unless you're betrothed. Until you get to that point of the marriage covenant being written out. And it was. And it was. And so this brings, brings it into light. But you've got to understand, Israel was God's delight. God delighted in Israel. Psalm 16 says that as for the saints who are on the earth, they are the majestic ones in whom I delight. See, God delighted in Israel just as Jesus delights in us. Israel hurt God because while they were betrothed to God, they ran off after other men. If, if you want to say, because they are the bride, he was, he was the groom. The same thing can is true of us if we're not careful. As we lose our first love, do you see? Jesus delights in us. We are to be his bride. We are committed to him. We are under covenant with Jesus today as the church. And you are a member of the church. If you are a member of Jesus, if you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're part of that. That's part of, that's the contract that you enter into, is to be part of that. And he wants you to be faithful. Turn around, repent, and come back to him. Father, I pray, Lord, that you would work in the lives of your people and bring them to you in Jesus' name. Thank you. Turn to God and let him bring those blessings upon you as are written in Revelation. We'll see you next time. God bless you. Have a great week.